Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Paul Mackay from Analog Wonderland and today I'm going to be telling you a story. A story that goes back several decades and involves the sub-brand Kodacolor, um, which is Kodak's color negative film brand for many, many years. We have some Kodacolor that's going in this month's Wonderbox and it's a wonderful opportunity to talk about its history and its legacy and how it lives on today. Whether you are new to film photography or a long-time analog enthusiast, our channel covers all things film, from tips and tricks, film reviews, to how-to videos. Subscribe now and keep those notifications turned on so that you never miss a beat. Happy shooting! So, Code of Colour. First of all, the two films that I'm holding in my hand, you'll see a couple of differences. Code of Colour 200, Code of Colour 100, and also slightly different branding. Now, if we look at the different expiry dates, this one is expiring in 2000, has expired in 2000, excuse my tenses. This one expired in 2005, so this is definitely the more recent uh, branding. You can see the K come through that we probably recognize from the Kodak badge, um, whereas this one is the slightly more simplistic one. Of course, both of them covered the amazing period back when Kodak were big enough to sponsor the Olympics globally ongoing <laughs> as the official film of the Olympics. Um, what wonderful times they were. And the reason that we're talking about it today is because they are going in the Wonder Box. Now, um, we have a bit of a mix of both, so you might get the slightly older one, you might get the slightly newer one, but they share a load of similarities in how they look, how they shoot, what results they'll give you, and of course their history. So we've lumped them together in one, so you will get a code of color expired film in your Wonder Box. Code of color as a name, was the first color 35mm negative film marketed by Kodak. And I'm pausing a little bit and thinking this through because it's quite new. And so basically we go back to the 50s and Kodak had Kodachrome as its first color 35mm film and it had Kodak color in roll format as color negative and they introduced it into 35mm format and then did a load of marketing behind it to really drive consumers into colour negative 35mm format which is then you know made up the aesthetic of families summer snaps for the next uh, 40 years until the digital revolution. Code of Colour eventually morphed into gold via Code of Colour Gold. There are also periods where it was called Code of Colour XR and um, a couple other variations but Code of Colour Gold was the one sort of towards the end turned into Gold 200, they used to be Gold 100 and 400 I think as well which came again from Code of Colour. Today we're left with just Gold in 200 speed but obviously in 35mm and recently 120. So this is sort of the, the advent and the, uh, the dawn of all of those consumer colour films separate to Portra, to Ektar um, and to Ektachrome that were more professional films. These, when they were first produced, will have created that beautiful warmth of the Kodak typical aesthetic. Now, because they're a couple of decades expired, we're gonna use the rule of thumb of overexposing it by one stop for every decade expired, 2000 and 2005, so 20 years. So overexposed by two stops. That means if you're shooting with a 200, tell your camera it's ISO 50. If you're shooting with 100, tell your camera or light meter it's shooting at 25. If your camera can't cope with that, doesn't have those settings, then put it on the box speed, expose properly, and then just move either shutter speed or uh, aperture by two to let in more light, um, and that will give you the same effect. Your camera will think you're overexposing, but you know you're not. So that's the way that you can get the best out of these things. And it's a really wonderful opportunity to shoot a piece of history and to enjoy these films uh, in the way that they were. I mean, if they, if they expired in 2000, this would have been produced in the 90s, back when digital camera was a, a vague, stormy horizon that hadn't yet swept over the world. 2005, it was very much <laughs> coming to life. 2005, you think, um, the iPhone was 2007, I think. 2008, so we're not that far off mobile phones coming through, but just in the difference between these two, you have the rise of point and shoot, you have the era when DSLR price was coming down and suddenly professionals were switching, finding it more convenient to shoot. Um, and so by 2005, the odds that um, 
sports photographers would have been just using film to capture athletics or something else is unlikely. So these are really from the cusp of history, which I think makes them uh, really interesting and fascinating to shoot. The images themselves will be really fun. Um, so yeah, slightly more desaturated than a gold film that you'd shoot today fresh. Slightly more green than the traditional Kodak warmth. Different color chemistries degrade at different times across this period. Um, the, we don't know the entire history of how they've been stored and used since expiration. Um, we know that the last couple of steps had them in good cold storage and we've sampled bat shots to give you the results that you're seeing through today. So we're reasonably confident that these are going to give you some really interesting shots. Um, and hopefully, as I say, a chance just to have a little bit of a little bit of fun with it. If you are overexposing, you don't need to worry too much about the reduced sensitivity. Um, you can just shoot with it um, and, and enjoy the, the vintage look that you will have coming back. Beautiful for portraits, beautiful for sort of timeless portraits. So if you can get some summer shots of uh, family and friends, you know, enjoying uh, enjoying a picnic or something where you can't see mobile phones, you can't see cars that date it. It'll be really interesting to see whether your photos reflect a little bit of a, a 90s vibe straight out of the camera. We'd love to see it. Um, for Wonderbox subscribers, obviously, this is a great one to shoot on to then enter into the rolling competition to share your work. Um, but regardless of whether you want to enter the competition or not, when you've shot these, if you like them, please do drop some notes below. If you remember Code of Colour from the first time round, again, please feel free to share images or links to Flickr or Instagram of, um, or your personal website. Um, so people can see what these films look like in their heyday when they were fresh. And then as a group we can sort of do a bit of compare and contrast as to how, they, how they've aged and how they've aged uh, slightly differently perhaps. Expired film, it's a brilliant one to play with. We're really lucky to have got our hands on such great quality um, and as I say from such an interesting part of film photography's history. Have a lot of fun with it and I'll see you again soon.